Hello and welcome to one of Morningstar's ministries, It's Not Over. Thank you so much for being a part of you. are listening by way of either sermonaudio.com slash it's not over, um, or you have clicked on one of the links on our Facebook page, or you are on our YouTube channel. And we thank you so much for doing that. We hope that you can spread the word. One way you can do that is share. If you're on Facebook, you can. if you like that uh, YouTube uh, page, uh, we ask you to please like the page. Please subscribe to our channel. And then share the, some of these videos in which um, you have been blessed by, if you've agreed with. If you disagree with them, share them anyway. <laughs> and uh, we'd appreciate um, any kind of help that you can get. And Dr. Farrell, Brother Josh, how are you guys doing? I'm doing good. I'm uh, I'm happy that uh, the Lord has given us and sustaining us. Amen. You know, anything that's worth doing for the Lord is worth doing more than once. Mm. You know, and we've got, and that's the problem with a lot of Christians and churches and ministries is they're more like a meteorite. Uh, we want to be stars mm-hmm. every night, man. Mm-hmm. We're in our place doing what we're supposed that's to do. Point. Now we're talking about what is a cult, and uh, today we want to try to get into. Uh, the Jehovah Witnesses, mainly. Okay. Uh, but the Apostle Paul warned us that heretics would come even of our own selves. You know, like, let me give you an example. The guy by the name of William Miller. William Miller was a Baptist, mm-hmm. at least in name. Mm-hmm. He's the one that got the Seventh-day Adventist started mm-hmm. by predicting the coming of Christ. Mm-hmm. He did it twice, got it wrong twice, and then some stupid 15-year-old girl named Ellen White took over and hence the Seventh-day Adventists uh, were launched. They were launched on bad prophecies that never came true. Mm-hmm. Let's be clear. Same thing with Jehovah Witnesses. Now, uh, Judge Rutherford and, and Taz Russell, these two guys were de- declaring the end of the world. I think their first one was 1914, okay. declared the end of the world. Sounds about right. Yeah, it was about right. Was, I think, what was that? 1914, I think that was World War I. <laughs> yeah, they got that wrong. Mm-hmm. And yet the Jehovah Witness, you know, Mickey Mouse Club, started on bad prophecies that never mm-hmm. came true. And, of course, the only thing that men learn from history is... Men never learn anything from history. That's right. They just don't. Paul said this, Now, I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Mm. Romans 16, 17, and 18. And so what we have in the Bible is, is we have warnings that there are wolves in sheepskin. They come like a sheep. Ah, when really it's... Mm-hmm. Bar- I mean, they are going to... And I talked to a farmer one time out in Montana. He said, you ever see what a wolf does to a sheep? He said, first of all, what they rip the throat out. Mm. And he said, you know, when you get up in the morning, you go out in the field... And you see this white fur with red blood on it. He, it just leaves a vivid impression on you. Mm-hmm. He says they take the throat out and they go in, they, they grab the heart and some of the entrails, and they eat that and they leave the, they leave the sheep. He said it's pretty gruesome mm-hmm. what wolves will do to sheep. And, uh, of course, the good news is we have a sovereign shepherd that can protect us, but it's he also has given us under shepherds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And as an under shepherd, man, I don't want any Jehovah Witness or Mormon or Muslim or anybody else bothering our sheep. Right. And uh, I know how to use the rod. Okay, so now how to combat cults. Cults deviate from what we call traditional Christianity, the cardinal doctrines and truths of the Word of God. They claim extra biblical revelation from their stupid leader. Right. And in many respects, the Roman Catholic Church, I think, according to this definition, could be called a cult. Yeah. Uh, by sound doctrine, we mean things that are asserted true and very plain um, over and over, no private interpretation in the Word of God. Okay, that's why the the Bereans were more noble because they searched the scriptures daily whether such things were so. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, they they, they got to be careful about cults because they'll use the same terminology. But they'll change the meaning. But they'll change the meaning. Yeah. Like the Armstrongites, you know, they say, well, yes, we believe you must be born again. Okay. Okay, but you know what they mean by that? What? Your resurrection. The uh, physical, the bodily resurrection at the end of de- uh, at the end of days. That's what it means to them to be born again. Uh, well, how do you get to that? Yeah, right. Well, you got to be an Armstrongite. Worldwide and work really hard, right? Yeah, work really hard. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> they're all um, workspace. Of course, they got a you know Armstrong. What's the guy? Herbert W. Armstrong. He stole a bunch of money. 
And then his son, Garner Ted Armstrong, he stole some money. I forget all the junk going on. But uh, so the, the Worldwide Church of God is not real popular now. But they right. used to be pretty powerful. They're kind of like the Jehovah's Witnesses. So they'll use terminology. You've got to be careful about that. And then, of course, understand their mission. The, the, the whole thing about Jehovah's Witnesses is it's about proselyting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in 1951, Jehovah's Witnesses were in 54 countries. In 1961, 10 years later, 185. That's moving, man. Hmm. From 51, 54, 10 years later, 185 countries, Jehovah Witnesses. Of course, they would you know, boast about that. I, I think that what that shows is um, how ingenious is human ingenuity and human you know, uh, sweat equity. Mm-hmm. You know, they just know how to work. Jehovah Witnesses are encouraged to give one year as a volunteer in New York to help in printing. They print over six million Bibles a year. Now, when we say Bibles, we're talking about the New World Translation, right, right. which is a joke of a Bible. Um, thirteen over thirteen million booklets a year. I think it's more like twenty now. And of course, Mormons are encouraged to give two years. Uh huh. They have to do their mission, right? Their mission. And and that's on their their dime. Mm-hmm. They got to pay for that. Mm-hmm. And so when you see the Mormons on their bicycles or white shirts, their blue pants, riding around, uh, those young men are doing their mission work. I always feel so sorry for those guys. Yeah, I do too. I, a lot of those those young missionary guys are pretty likable guys. You yeah, know? they're they're really easy to talk to. They're nice. The thing that uh, always gets me about them is uh, every time I've always talked to them, they're always they're they're like brittle leaves you know they're mm. they're so easily shaken whenever you talk to them. I, I would expect that they would like know their doctrine inside and out and you know and mm-hmm. be ready to go and but every time i've ever confronted them it was all it's always like they're, they're so yeah. sure yeah mormon missionaries are not that well studied no they're not they're they don't not. study the bible and they, they don't know how to think independently at all mm-hmm. it's a sad thing so what we got to do is know their game plan uh, first of all they rarely identify themselves as who they are like they don't knock on the door and say Hello, we're from the Kingdom Hall. We're Jehovah Witnesses. Right. No, 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 no. They don't do that. They have some stupid Awake magazine or the Watchtower magazine, mm-hmm. and they come in and say, hello, we're doing a survey, and we just like to ask you a few questions. We'll be very brief. Or, you know, and are you having a good day today? And are you happy with the direction America's going? Mm-hmm. Would you like to see a better world? Mm-hmm. You know, they go that, because they're all about kingdom <laughs> on earth, right? right. Yeah. I've, I've actually had Jehovah Witness say they don't want to go to heaven. I said, well, it's good that you... They'd rather I, stay on earth? Yeah, because I don't want... I said, well, I think you're going to get your wish. <laughs> 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 it's a good thing, you know what I mean? Yeah, I had a Jeho- uh, Jehovah Witness tell me that. He said, he said he's not going to heaven. Yeah, I said, I agree yeah. with you. He's like, I'm not going to heaven. I was like, you're not. Well, I know I am. <laughs> he's yeah. like, no, you're not. Because I mean, they only believe the, the first 144,000 right, right. Jehovah Witnesses get to do that. When they first started that stupid doctrine, they were small. Mm-hmm. And so in order to be part of the 144,000, they had to be a Jehovah Witness. Mm-hmm. But then they grew bigger right. than 144,000. Right. Right. So, so now they had to kind of change the spin, yep. you know. Yep. Uh, they try to capitalize on economic difficulties, too. Oh, do they? Oh, yeah, man. Oh, they're cool. they're kind of like Democrats, you know. You know, don't let a good crisis go to waste, right, you know. Right. Right. And then they try to capitalize on war issues because they they're trying to ride the wave of something that concerns you to get you into their cult. And they draw attention to dissension, dissatisfaction, like for instance, your marriage or the government or society. They they use these things to. It's like a hook. You see, they're, every bait's got its hook. And then they desire to slowly but surely try to bait you and set up. Bible studies Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in your home. Be careful when Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons want to set up a Bible study in your home. Uh, They want to just basically, of course, they don't think this, but they're going to destroy your faith in traditional Christianity and develop mind control Mm -hmm. over their victims. Now, I will say this. It, when you think about it, most of your Protestant churches and evangel are, are they're just dead on the vine, right? I mean, they're dead. Yeah. I mean, some of these Methodists around here, they don't even preach the gospel. No, you they know, don't. they're a joke. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I look, man, I'd rather stay home and watch football than go to some of these churches. It's right. just dumb. And the Catholics are the same way. Mm-hmm. So these these cults, like the Mormons, Jeho- they prey on those people. In fact, you know, the Jehovah Witnesses, back when I was a kid, they used to go door knocking on Sunday. Really? Oh, yeah, man. On Sunday morning around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. You know why? They catch all the so-called uncommitted Christians staying home from church. Yeah. Pretty brilliant, yeah. you know? And, of course, you'll find some Baptists like that. There's plenty of Baptists who don't know Christ, mm-hmm. 
and they're just going along for the ride. Now, these Jehovah Witnesses started around 1874 by a guy named Charles Taz Russell. And the Watchtower uh, Tower Society came into an existence in Pittsburgh in 1881. That's interesting. Same time as the revised version. Yeah. Um, so the Watchtower is the official magazine of the Jehovah Witnesses. Okay, we call them JWs. Sometimes they used to call them uh, Russellites. Okay. So if you ever heard the word Russellite, that means Jehovah Witnesses. But that's kind of antiquated. Right. Yeah. Now, we must recognize not only Jehovah God as our father, but his organization as our mother. This is a quote from him. God requires obedience, honor, and respect, not only of the living God himself, but to his wifely organization as well. Hmm. Charles Taz Russell, referring to the Jehovah Witnesses as Jehovah's wife. Russell labeled himself pastor, and Russell became quite familiar with Adventism and saw it growing and spreading. So he adopted much of their teachings, too, as far as, um, you know, setting dates. Mm -hmm. Like uh, he said, Russell, of course, said that the end of the, the world is going to come to an end. And what happened? He died aboard a train at the age of 65. Mm -hmm. Now, the guy that took over was a very smart guy, mm -hmm. Judge J.F. Rutherford. Mm -hmm. He took the mantle. And uh, it was not until 1931 that they became known as Jehovah Witnesses. Oh, okay. But good old Judge Rutherford, man, he is the guy that kind of, he's kind of like Brigham Young. You know, you had Joey Smith. Right. yep. Joey Smith was the personality. Mm -hmm. Brigham Young was the brains. Yeah. Russell was the personality. Judge Rutherford was the brains behind the Jehovah Witnesses. And so they were called Russellites. They were also called Millenarian Dawn Dawnist. And they were also called the International Bible Students. They had to flee Germany because they didn't pay their bills. Hmm. Had to flee New York. And so Rutherford was their leader. And those watching by, by television or you're watching by internet, of course, let me say this. You're perhaps not a Jehovah Witness. If you are, you're, you're pretty upset at me right now. What I'm going to target is this. You may have a friend or a loved one that is setting up Bible studies with these Jehovah Witnesses. You need to warn them to stay away from those people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, listen to what the Bible says in, in 2 John. I want to turn there real quick. I know we're running out of time. It's Third John, uh, 2 John, yes. He says, If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, talking about the doctrine of Christ, that he is the Son of God, co-equal with the Father, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. I tell people all the time, do not invite those people in your house. Right. That's right. The Bible says so. Right? That's right. Now, I think it could also have reference to the church house, but nonetheless, both, mm -hmm. you are not to wish them Godspeed mm -hmm. or God bless you because these guys are pernicious heretics. Yeah. Love them, rebuke them, preach the gospel to them, but do not welcome them. Right. Thank you so much for listening, and I don't want to be a broken record, but if you are someone who is listening, who is new, you've just been referred to the show, um, we appreciate you. Check us out. You can also look at some of the things like our webpage, MorningstarNetwork.org. Um, it's Not Over um, is a ministry of Morningstar Baptist Church, and uh, we appreciate any kind of support, whether it's prayer or financial, or whether it's just word of mouth, advertising and telling others about what we're doing and, and what we're about while well, we're about the word of god we're about teaching truth and we're about warning people of uh false religions such as what we've been kind of going over this week and uh, we thank you so much for doing that you can be a huge blessing to us if you would please go to morningstarnetwork.org and uh, pray first but uh give financially to our cause um, we would through some of those some of the money that you may give, um, which is tax deductible, we could use to help advertise this through Facebook and YouTube and have the possibility and the potential through the Holy Spirit's help of reaching hundreds of thousands. And so you could be a part of that. And we hope you will be. Dr. Farrell is going to close right now with a few comments. I've got a lot of comments, but I'd like to read one. This is from Charles Taz Russell. Quote, it would be better to neglect the Bible and get my comments on the Bible than to miss my comments and read the Bible. Now that's a heretic, you see. That's a wolf. And I'm begging you, get in the Word of God. Know what you believe. Know what the genuine, real Word of God says. That way you'll spot a counterfeit.